I've been watching the encroaching attacks on women's rights in this country for the last few months. And personally, it's just something that I cannot stand to watch on the sidelines anymore. So I decided to make this video to share with you some of the insights that I have into how this war on women has come to be and what we can do about it. So we really have to go back several centuries to understand how this all began. Back in the Dark Ages, there was this period of time where dogmatic fundamentalist thinking was the grounding for preserving a system of patriarchy and control and dominance by men over women, something that had been happening for a very long time and that began to lose its hold on society in the Enlightenment era of the 1600s and 1700s when there was a growing trend of secularization that placed dogmatic views about the role of an authoritarian god on society, put that on the sideline and started to elevate a different view of human nature that places reasoning and the capacity for people to consider their own options and make their own choices as something that increasingly became a centerpiece of society. Now, this secularization threatened the fundamentalist view, which is profoundly patriarchal and authoritarian. This happened in many ways. It arose with uh, the increase of literacy and the printing of books that allowed people to seek their own questions and answers about matters that previously had been the realm of authority of an, empir an empirical, I'm sorry, an imperial church. And as the rights of citizens start to become recognized as something that could displace the authoritarian centrality of, of church as the mode of government in the world, there began to have a liberalization, a process of increasing freedom that was based in a sense of empathy and compassion for others that people increasingly saw as being like themselves. This is what led to uh, women's suffrage and the right to vote. It's what gave us the uh, expanding freedoms that ended slavery and started to bring more inclusivity to people from different races and cultures as we increased and expanded our capacity for inclusiveness in the, in the societies that we lived in. Now, this is something that's really become um, an acute conflict in the modern world where the, um, the historic conservative, patriarchal, authoritarian view has corroded as there's been an increasing acceptance of the basic dignity and respect for all human beings and an inclusivity that enables us to consider how women should be empowered in society. Of course, this is something that um, in today's world and politics, we see expressed through the label of conservatism in the United States. Now, why is it that conservatism is so deeply maligned, so antithetical to women's rights in, in modern society? Well, simply put, conservatism is a worldview that's based in authoritarianism, the top-down hierarchy, and its central governing principle is that the sanctity of authority must be preserved at all costs. Now, in the context of uh, Western religion, this is most pronounced in religious fundamentalism, in Christianity, in Judaism, um, and even in Islam, where it's a fundamentalist view. But always it's something that is grounded in a notion that there is a vengeful God who is a male God who has dominance over the world, and women must know their place in the moral order. And so now the men of this uh, movement to protect, to protect fundamentalism in the world are seeking to stamp out the rights of women to preserve that moral order. Now, moral order simply is the notion that there is a vertical hierarchy where God is above humans, men are above women, humanity is above nature, and in some cases it's even still racist that whites are above non-whites and that um, Westerners are above non-Westerners. But it's really most acute in society today with the relationship between men and women and their place in society. Now, something that's really fundamental to this psychologically that's happening right now is that these, these patriarchal authoritarians who go by the name of conservative are actually um, acting like bullies in society. They're pushing their views around. They're beating people up verbally, emotionally, and in some cases physically um, through the taking away of basic rights of people. And something that um, you may not know is that the historic evolutionary roots of democracy 
in humanity actually come from the, the way that groups of people handle bullies. So if you go back to the hunter-gatherer days, where we lived in small bands of between 50 and 200 people, group cohesion was absolutely essential for the survival of those groups. And so the um, capacity for those groups to stop bullies from being the would-be upstarts, basically from uh, stop them from becoming dictators and siphoning valuable resources away from the group for their own gain, became the central tenet of what later emerged as the expression of democracy. So democracy at its very core is the power of the group to stop bullies from throwing their weight around and doing harm to the group at the expense of the group. And so this war on women is really, right at the core, a battle for democracy. So this is something that goes way back to our evolutionary origins, to the birth of society itself, is how do groups of people handle bullies when bullies are trying to throw their weight around and do harm to the group for personal gain? So when we're talking about the rights of women in this conversation, we're really talking about the heart of democracy. If we cannot treat women well in society, then we can't treat anything that has to do with democracy in a way that's actually going to be effective. So what can we do about these bullies who have a patriarchal authoritarian view of the world? Well, first of all, the way to stop a bully is to call them out to publicly shame them, to say, no more, we will not accept this. This is just as true for the way that we handle, say, a bully on the playground beating up another kid, or the way that um, homophobic people um, bully young homosexual children, you know, teenage boys and girls who happen to be gay. And we've seen what's happened in that situation where these gay boys and girls who are bullied commit suicide, and then we've had these huge anti-bullying rallies. Well, it's time to have just the same kind of anti-bullying rallies against the patriarchal authoritarians, these people who think that men should have dominion over women and that democracy has no place in society. Those people need to be shut down and stopped. We need to publicly shame them and say, this is unacceptable in our world, in, in America today. Also, we need to call out that this is actually an outdated view of the world, that this Religious fundamentalism is something that thrived in the Dark Ages, but has no place in the modern era. And the reason that it's raising its ugly head right now is because it feels threatened. This fundamentalism and its patriarchic views are being challenged by uh, increasing modernism and globalization and the expansion of human rights. So this is our time to call it out and say, this is the 21st century world. We shouldn't be basing how we treat people in society on the dictates of a moral code that are hundreds of years old, and in some sense, even thousands of years old. Now is the time for us to focus on how to live in a deeply interconnected and pluralistic world where we have to live with people who have different views from ourselves. We have to have tolerance and acceptance. Also, we have to deal with global systemic threats. So we have to live and embrace, live in and embrace the complexities of the modern world. So the archaic notions of authoritarianism from a past era are not going to serve us today. So fundamentalism needs to be held in place and treated as the bullying that it truly is. So what will happen if we're successful at doing this? Well, simply put, we will be able to restore democracy to its central place in American society and increasingly in the world, which is where it belongs. So this is a time for us to call out the extremism in our political parties. And of course, this is an unbalanced equation. The Republican Party has been taken over at the highest levels by these radical extremist authoritarians. And they are now espousing a fundamentalist view onto society, which really um, has hints of things that we could even call in a legitimate technical way, we could call them fascism. How a dictator kind of mindset is being used to oppress the masses, to advance its own view and consolidate power. And this is happening in the alignment of religious fundamentalism with particular kinds of corporate governance, and that we're seeing that in the world today. So this is our chance to put an end to that by rallying together around calling out how basic human rights for half of our species, for all of the women in the world, are being threatened in a fundamental way. 
And so if we can actually turn the tide on this conversation, change the discourse, we can elevate the discussion of what democracy is and should be, how bullies should be treated in society, and what we as a people want to do in our 21st century world. And of course, now is the time to take action. We saw earlier this year what happened when Rush Limbaugh started bullying an upstanding young woman. He called her a slut. He called her a prostitute. He even went so far as to suggest that if she wants to have sex and have contraception covered by medical insurance, that she should film it. And he and other patriarchal men can watch her sexual encounters as pornography. Talk about disgusting. And the amazing thing is the response that came from that, as women around the world use social media to rally themselves and to bring the men who cared about them and who agreed with them to the cause. And it was real women leadership, female leadership, that caused this to happen. And they initiated a boycott against Rush Limbaugh. And I don't know if you know this, but for the first time in the history of Rush Limbaugh's show, there was actually a blackout during advertising, a 30-second window of time where there was silence because they weren't able to get enough advertisers to pay for commercials. That shows that they are weak, that they're on the defensive. And so now is the time to go after them and to beat them back down. We collectively need to put a stop to this kind of bullying. And if we do, we can return the focus of this country and its national discourse to where it belongs, which is focusing on how to build and preserve complex economies and address really difficult problems like changing climate and the spread of disease and public health and how to live in a pluralistic world. All these things that we know we need to be dealing with and get away from all these distractions that these bullies are making us focus on, which is both wasting our time and hurting our democracy. So this is what is happening in the world today. This war on women goes way back you can follow the trends throughout the entire modern era of an expansion of compassion and freedom and how there's a pushback against it. And if we act collectively now, and if we stand up and claim our rights and our need for a real democracy in the 21st century, we can actually win. So let's do it.